I welcome you all to the lecture number 13 of the course title Psychology of Emotions Theory and Applications. So, today we will start module 4 and under module 4 there will be two lectures that is lecture number 13 and 14 and module 5 is all about you know group emotions. So, we will be talking about typically how people you know uh, express emotions or how the, the, the dynamics of emotions when we uh, be people kind of uh, are in a group setting not just in the individual setting. So, today's lecture is lecture number 13 and that is uh, emotions in group part 1. So, lecture number 14 will be part 2 both will discuss em, uh, emotions within the group how people when they collectively work together how emotions are experienced and expressed and what are the consequences of it. So, before we talk about today's lecture, let me give you a brief recap of lecture number last lecture that is lecture number 12 and overall basically in the last module we discussed about uh, the concept of positive emotions and happiness and in the last lecture more specifically we have discussed the concept the theory of sustainable happiness model basically we discussed a model where we try to understand that you know that this model uh, talks about three major determinants of happiness. Uh, one is genetic set point, another is life circumstances and the third is intentional activities and uh, they found that uh, one of the important takeaway of the mess of this particular model was that genetic set point and life circumstances are generally not much in our control. However, the third component intentional activities are those activities which we effortfully do engage in choose to engage in in our day to day life uh, functioning. So, this is where we can do lot of interventions or lot of uh, activities that we can choose to do which can enhance happiness. And we have also discussed what kind of activities at least research evidences are there that they can enhance happiness in that context we have discussed some activities and uh, some possible mechanisms in those directions. So, today we will be talking about emotions in group uh, basically we will see a little bit of historical account then we will talk about group emotions then we will talk about one major aspects of group emotion is emotional contagion. Uh, and we will discuss also the different automatic and intentional processes of emotional contagion. So, basically this is these are the things that we will be discussing today's lecture. So, let us start. So, research basically if you see uh, research has emphasized the significance of emotions in group dynamics. See whenever uh, people are be are kind of engaged in a group activity or behaving or interacting in a group situations or social situations emotion are bound to happen because in the context of interaction most of the emotions are expressed. So, emotion is at the center of group behavior or group actions and uh, most of these uh, if you see uh, emotions. So, due to so social the possibility of social interaction in the group it can lead to lot of emotional situations and the expression of emotion where there is a lot of interaction emotions are bound to happen. So, therefore, under, without understanding the concept of emotions, we cannot really understand the group dynamics. So, in order to understand the group dynamics, we need to understand the display of emotions and their consequences in the group setting. So, it is very critical to understand group life, group functionings and dynamics uh, in the context of uh, basically uh, when we talk about uh, groups, emotions are at the center of it. So, more specifically understanding uh, the group level dynamics impact how it impacts the way emotions are experienced. So, when people are in an isolated situations and when people are in the group situations. So, how group dynamics interactions and all these dynamics kind of impact the way emotions are experienced is very important and how they are experienced, how they are displayed and how all this display and experience experience of emotion further kind of influence the behavior. So, group can kind of group interaction can lead to emotional experiences, these emotions can further lead to uh, influence the group dynamics. So, it could be somewhat like this. So, so group behavior bound to happen and kind of elicit different kinds of emotions.
these emotions will kind of further influence the group behavior. So, it is going to kind of influence bidirectionally. So, let us give some of the brief historical account of the context of emotions, how these emotions have been looked at historically in the group setting. One of the first person who talked about uh, emotions in the group is Gustav Lee Bonn. Uh, he was a French psychologist who introduced this concept of group mind and crowd behavior. Still, uh, some of the ideas are very prominent and significant in the psychological literature when we talk about crowd behavior, how people behave in the crowd or how crowd behavior leads to emergence of a group mind. So, one of his influential work in his or book that is still very relevant is the crowd a study of the population mind. So, this is one of very significant uh, 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 book by Gustav Liebon. Liebon suggested that prolonged exposure uh, to large groups could cause individual to become emotionally overwhelmed, impulsive and lacking in critical judgment. So, he was mostly focusing on how people behave in the group setting, particularly in the crowd uh, or in the large group. Uh, so, he said most of the people in when they engage in a group large group situation, uh, uh, it could lead to individuals to become emotionally overwhelmed, impulsive and lack in critical judgment. So, people become very impulsive, their kind of rationality get di diminished and they kind of get overwhelmed by the emotional content of the group or emotions expressed in the group setting. He also talked about uh, that individuals gather in group, they form a collective mind. So, this is something very important when people kind of behave in a group setting or a crowd setting, then it is no longer an individual mind, it becomes a collective mind, which kind of directs uh, behavior of individuals in the group and they generally behave very differently from the individual minds. So, the people who would behave in some way individually when they are in the individually doing some kind of actions it will be very different when they are in the part of a group or a part of a crowd. So, generally he said in the crowd people lose their rationality and independence and becomes more susceptible to emotions and opinions of the group. So, people generally lose their individuality, rationality because they are more influenced by the group emotions rather than their own individual thought processes and rational mind. So, that is what basically implications of this uh, is that, that we see lot of people kind of get overwhelmed in a crowd which could lead to various kind of negative consequences of crowd behavior. People do not think logically, people kind of get overwhelmed by the group emotions and wherever emotion leads them, they just go and do things which probably they will never do when they are in, in the individual setting. People may do all kinds of heinous things, all kinds of crimes and those kind of thing. People who the same person would not do those kind of activities when they are alone. So, the kind of this group kind of emotions takes over them and they lose their individuality and rationality this is what he said typically happens in the crowd. So, this crowd exhibits a distinctive characteristics and behaviors due to the psychological transformation of the individual within the group. So, basically some kind of transformation happens from the individual mind to the collective mind and where their behavior could be very different. He also argued that crowds tend to be impulsive, emotional and easily swayed by dominant ideas or leaders and crowd can be very vulnerable to impulsive actions, they are more guided by the emotions, lacks rationality and so on and uh, leaders can sweat them into various directions you know according to the wishes of the leader and so on. So, Liebon highlighted that anonymity of the crowd. So, one of the reasons why people behave so differently and sometimes people can engage in heinous things, uh, crimes and so on, which individually they will never do. Why this happens? One of the reason is sense of reduced responsibility or division of responsibility is something very uh, important. In a crowd, you are not an individual. So, you know, you, you will not be held individually responsible for any action that you do. People will say it is a crowd that has done, that have done or they have killed somebody or like this, you know. Crowd was going and somebody was killed, you know. So, people feel that I will not be individually held responsible. So, that whole sense of responsibility get diffused in the crowd. So, that reduce responsibility or division of responsibility uh, according to Lieben is one of the reason why people, you know, could engage in the various kind of irrational acts 
and uh, lack of self control and doing things which probably will they will never do individually uh, so crowd behavior could be very dangerous in some sense one of the reason why this happens is the diffusion of responsibility or reduced responsibility so this uh, another thing that happens in the crowd he also talked about is emotional contagion that we will be talking in detail now where emotions spread rapidly in the group so emotions are contagious in a sense it spread from one person to another person rapidly and it intensified the collective emotional experiences so these are some of the ideas that Lebon talked about in his book and it is one of the first references where he talked about emotions in the group setting or in the crowd setting another person who also talked about group mind or group behavior or emotions in the context of group is Durkheim so Emil Durkheim is who is, is a pioneer sociologist uh, he also explored the concept of group emotion in his work elementary forms of religious life uh, he also talked about lot of these ideas which are kind of very similar in some sense to the idea of Levon uh, but his approach was more in the context of uh, rituals and the collective uh, consciousness more how values and beliefs kind of work together in a group setting so Durkheim argued that in social groups individuals are bound together by collective consciousness so it's very similar to the idea of that collective mind that Lebon talked about a set of shared beliefs values and emotions so this collective consciousness is kind of derived from the shared beliefs values and emotions when a group of people has a shared beliefs ideas and values they form a collective consciousness and their behavior is guided by that so this collective consciousness shapes the way group members experience and express emotions so this is collective consciousness kind of determines the way members experience and express their emotions Durkheim he also introduced the idea of collective effervescence which basically means uh, heightened emotional intensity experienced by individuals during the group gatherings or rituals so another thing that happens is that when people gather in a group their emotional experiences the intensity of emotional experiences kind of gets heightened or it becomes more intensified in the group setting when people are doing collective work or some kind of rituals together so this emotional energy arises from the shared participation in collective activities and contributes to social cohesion and solidarity so he is also looking at this aspect in a more positive way in a sense that you know it also brings about social cohesion so when people work together in a group it also kinds of this whole emotion binds them together so social cohesion solidarity uh, when people uh, so collectively do something so cooperation from each other you know connection with each other all these are enhanced by this kind of emotions so there is a positive aspects to this aspect of uh, this collective aspect also Libon was kind of focusing more on how people become destructive in the kind of crowd setting because of the diffusion of responsibility uh, but there is a positive aspect to it also in some so people get together and cohesion happens and the cooperation happens when they want to collectively achieve something so Durkheim emphasized that, ritual, that rituals and symbols play a crucial role in fostering group emotions in group emotions whatever rituals people do together a lot of group symbols so every organizations every groups generally they make some symbols for their identity all these are emotionally kind of binding helps them to bind together so all these ritual symbols they play a very important role in kind of facilitating group emotions or binding them together so through this participation in religious or cultural rituals individuals becomes connected to the groups collective emotions reinforcing social bonds and reinforcing a sense of belonging so all these activities rituals and collective activities and the emotion that generates out of it helps people to kind of connect with each other uh, reinforce social bonds so it gives them a sense of belongingness they feel that we belong to something gives meaning in their life and so on so in that sense it can do all this function as functioning aspect now another psychologist uh, Mac Dougal also talked about in 1920s he also talked about uh, the emotions in the group setting he was a British psychologist who explored the concept of group mind again 
group mind is when people be work in a group setting uh, in his uh, work the group mind a sketch of the principles of collective psychology so in 1920 it was published and uh, macdougall proposed that group mind emerges from the instinctual nature of individuals within a group so people have an instinctive mind uh, which emerge and it uh, it emerges from this in this instinctual mind you know kind of behaves very spontaneously and uh, when people are in a group setting it automatically leads them to kind of function as a group mind so this group mind emerges from this instinctive or instinctual nature of individual within a group so they automatically there is a sense of instinct to connect and you know form groups and uh, behave because we are social animals so that instinctive mind kind of facilitates formation of this group mind human being possesses innate social instinct that drive them to form groups and cooperate with each other so there is an instinctive nature in our mind there is a basic uh, fundamental aspects or nature of human mind is to connect with other people because that is what is the meaning of social animal and uh, this instinctive mind kind of facilitates this group mind and experiences of group emotions and so on so in a group setting uh, emotions are contagious this is what mcdougall says because you are not alone there are many other people expressing emotions so it could be contagious it could spread from one people to another people especially when you are connected to others strongly in that group and individuals can easily pick up and share the emotional states of others and we spontaneously pick emotions of other it's a very natural phenomena when others express emotion we are also influenced by it and many times we instinctively pick those emotions and we also experience similar emotions. So, this emotional uh, contagion creates a collective emotional experiences that influences the behavior and attitudes of the group as a whole. So, this emotional contagion creates this collective emotional experience. Why people become a kind of group mind or collectively experience similar emotions? It is because of this contagion spread from one individual to another individual. So, MacDougall emphasizes the presence of group sentiment. So, these are all kinds of similar phenomena explained by most of these people. Collective mind, you know, all group sentiment and very similar concept. So, it is a shared emotional bond. Group sentiment is mostly in the emotional contact, it is said, when people sh in a shared way they experience some emotion or which bonds them together and unites individual within the group. So, that is the group sentiment. So, this sentiment creates a collective identity and foster a sense of unity and loyalty among the group members. So, this group sentiment is responsible for the group connection and group cohesion and it gives a sense of unity among the members, loyalty among the members and so on. MacDougall also argued that the group mind possesses distinct characteristics and behaviors differ from individual mind. What Libon also said is that you know group mind it could be very different from the individual mind individuals who are part of that group uh, in group individuals may exhibit behaviors and make decisions they would not otherwise do as an individual so this group mind could be very different from the individual mind and as Lieben also said that individual could do lot of ac actions in the group setting that they will not do individually so that kind of shows the group mind is distinct from the individual mind now lot of these ideas these early ideas some of these ideas are very similarly expressed in lot of the by lot of these researchers or theorists research on the interplay between emotions and group only recently began to attract attention from emotional score not much research has really uh, have taken place after those initial ideas um, recently uh, obviously few uh, researchers has kind of lot of researcher kind of got attention of this group emotions and so on so uh, this kind of this topic kind of received a lot of attention from the recent researchers so over the kind of past decades uh, there has been expansion of this research on the emotions in groups past few decades and uh, it is now kind of studied in the disciplines like psychology sociology philosophy and management now when we talk about emotions in groups there are two aspects to it or two types or two important aspects to this one is 
when we consider emotions in a group processes one concept is called group emotions another is emotions on behalf of the groups so there are two important concepts one is how as a group collectively experiences an emotions so that is called as a group emotions and there can be another aspects to the group emotion is that people can experience emotions on behalf of group so individually they are experiencing something but it is not coming from their individual life but coming from their membership to the group so because they are identified with a group whatever happens in the group influences them emotionally so they experience if let's say something good happens in their group they will feel proud about their group so it's it's an emotion that is happening on behalf of that group so emotions on behalf of the group we'll be talking about in the next lecture more specifically this lecture will be focusing more on group emotions so group emotions as we said is an uh, shared emotions by the members of the group for example when a crowd in a stadium expresses their emotions so it's a kind of shared emotions everybody experiences emotions collectively or let's say some <coughs> or people who favor a particular team all are experiencing a certain kind of emotions together so that's a group emotions emotions shared by the members of the group so this is called as group emotions now emotion on behalf of the group as i said it is uh, one can experience emotion due to emotional event that has occurred or been corrected or caused by the other members in the group so something happened in the group with which you are connected or you sense you have a sense of belongingness so other members did something and on behalf of that group you are experiencing some emotions for example feeling proud when members of your let's say swim team break records at a state tournament so you are part of a swim team but some members have achieved something you feel proud about it or you feel shame when some members of your group does something bad you also feel bad about them so you are experiencing some emotions on behalf of of the group with which you have a sense of connection or a sense of identity with so these are called emotions on behalf of the group so this two type of emotion may dis may kind of when explaining they are distinct in terms of concept wise but they are always intertwined in everyday life you know both of these emotional phenomena are important because they frequently occur in situations where two groups are interacting and understanding the interplay between these emotions and group processes can help us to resolve conflict between groups so this understanding all these dynamics of emotions in the group is very important to understand and resolve conflicts within the groups and to facilitate cooperation in the groups and so on so it is in this intergroup context that we have observed intense emotions such as anger hatred fear among individuals so group emotion is something that we'll be discussing in today's lecture uh, in a more uh, detailed way so it refers to emotion that are experienced we have already discussed shared within a collectives of individuals who are interacting with each other at a given moment in time so is this a group of individual in a particular moment and they are all sharing one emotions because of something that is happening around them it could be you know you know looking at uh, your own team winning or something like that or as a collective as a team achieve something so you are sharing your joy and so on so that is what is called as a group emotions so it's not individual collectively we are experiencing something so a small group for example uh, may be energized with joy and excitement while a crowd may become gripped by fear or galvanized into anger a crowd can experience anger together and destroy something or a group could experience fear and run away a group could experience joy together and express joy and so on celebrate so all this we all have seen in our day to day life so these are called as a group emotions so the emotions of those around us can always affect our emotions in several ways okay so that is now let us come to the more details of group emotions different aspects of group emotions so why we collectively experience emotions together so one is you know others in the groups can influence us so you may be very different from others but when you go into the group you kind of merge with them and others can influence your mind so other people can influence you, our understanding of what we are feeling and the causes of our feeling especially in situations where we may may be unsure so sometimes you may not be personally very emotional about something but when you mix with a group you can get that kind of indication that others are 
experiencing joy or anger or whatever it is. So, you may get the understanding the others why they are experiencing something. So, you can pick those understanding and you may feel those emotions. So, in that sense you are influenced by other members in the group which you individually may not, might not have experienced it. Especially in situation where you are not very sure about what is happening. So, you pick things from the others and experience that. Second is the mere presence of other people can affect the intensity of our emotions and our experience expressions of those emotions. So, simply the presence of others could intensify our emotions. Individually we may not really uh, ex experience some emotions very strongly, but the same emotions when we are around other people simply the presence of other people can intensify those emotions and we all have experienced that because others can influence and uh, expression of those emotions could be very strong because it is a collective phenomena you need to show to others and others will also influence your your understanding your expression so the study of group emotion has a long history as we have already seen it starts from lebon's idea of crowd mind and so on crowd behavior which basically crowd behavior he was talking about group emotions only uh, so where he basically talks groups provides a context for these emotional experiences so it's a group gives a kind of setting where it gives you an opportunity to express our emotions so after a period of neglect there has been renewed interest in this topic in the last few decades but still the group emotion is not very easy to measure and do research because individually one can ask and find out data, but group emotion um, doing research is still challenging and measuring part may be still very challenging. Probably that is why you know a lot of not much research has gone into it as compared to when we look at individual emotions and you know research into individual emotions. So, the main factors which we kind of focus here in the group emotion is emotional contagion. This is something how it spreads in the emotion spreads emotion in the group setting. So, emotion contagion is a psychological phenomena in which one person's emotions and related behaviors can directly influence or infect the emotions and behaviors of others. So, we all know we pick emotions from others as an social individual when we are specially connected with other individual, especially uh, if we have very strong connection whatever emotions other people experience it kind of we pick them and we also kind of experience them to some extent especially in the group setting and uh, whatever behavior they also do we also kind of pick those behaviors uh, it can influence and affect emotions and behaviors of other people. So, that is the idea of emotional contagion it is the idea that uh, emotions are socially contagious spreading from one person to another often without conscious most of the time such kind of contagion could be very unconscious you may not consciously pick it but unconsciously used kind of uh, your whole emotions will change when others are expressing emotions around you you will kind of get tuned to those emotions so it's very simple for example you know, if you are if, if if our loved one ex, ex, experiences sadness we also feel sad because you know we kind of identify with that person and uh, we kind of love that person and if that person experiences joy we also feel joy if that person experiences sadness we also feel sadness so it's kind of automatically you know this is how social behavior we as a social animal behave in a social groups and that kind of help us to connect with other individual it's a very instinctive phenomena so similar things happens in a more larger scale in the group setting and it can happen very unconsciously also. It can happen some conscious part to it is also there, but unconsciously also this can spread. So, people emotions and related behaviors can be influenced and contagious within a social or group setting. So, it can be contagious it spreads. In other words individual can catch or adopt emotions from others around them leading to a shared emotional experience within the group. So, it can lead to a shared emotional experience. So, this is how when it spread from one person to another and then it becomes a shared. So, everybody is experiencing same emotion. So, that is how it is shared because of the spread of emotions. So, this process can occur both consciously and unconsciously and plays significant role in shaping group emotions and dynamics. So, it can happen unconsciously also and consciously also some part of it. So, emotional contagion can have both positive and negative consequences. Uh, I think uh, it is very clear 
it depends on the nature of emotions. So, and how those emotions are expressed. So, positive side because of this emotional contagion, we are bonded with others, other people in the group and it is also responsible for empathy by understanding others perspective and so on. Social bonding is happening because of this emotional contagion. So, that is the positive part of it. Negative side it can spread negative emotions also. So, when a negative phenomena happens and people experience negative emotions in the group, it can spread like a wildfire and create conflicts and you know all the things that we see riots and other things. One of the reason is the spread of negative emotions in the group which can become uncontrollable after a certain times and can lead to all kinds of horrible consequences. Uh, we have seen so many such instances and it gets big because it gets amplified once it is shared in the group it gets amplified and the group can do behave in such a way that individuals will never do so, such things all the horrible things can happen. So, that is the negative part of contagion, but everything has negative and positive aspects. It can also bind people and collectively achieve something. So, this con concept of emotional contagion is well known in the fields of marketing and advertisements. Also, people use this idea, kind of use this idea to promote some products and so on. For example, this is something very commonly used. Uh, if you see canned laughter is something used very commonly which basically means recording of laughter to add humor. Okay. Uh, you might have, uh, we all might have seen you know certain advertisement or certain you know comedy serials and so on where people crack a joke or something and there is a background clapping will come together as if a group of people is clapping. It is just sound only. So, it adds impact or emotion. So, it kind of help, help of kind of emotions creates artificially creating an emotion which get transferred to the audience or whoever is looking at it. And this has been found to be effective also in a um, uh, lot of context you know advertisement it can be used in some you know serials some whatever it is you know where you want to add some impact of emotions. So, in television shows and commercials this is this has been used and which is intended to elicit some positive emotions like you know happiness or laughter and so on and uh, and it changes audience attitude also as compared to when such impact is not added when it is added it impacts them much more strongly so this tactic has shown to be effective in uh, various researches so with the rise of social media also some people also try to understand uh, whether emotional contagion can happen even when people are not physically present. For example, a lot of group, you know, groups are there in Facebooks and other things where, you know, collectively people form a group to discuss over certain issues. So, there are lar lar different thousands of such groups are there in social medias where people kind of come together to discuss a common issues and something like that, you know. But they are not physically present, you know, it is like uh, virtually they are all connected. So, some studies try to see that even can emotional contagion can happen. And I think in from our personal experience also it is very clear in social media emotional contagion can happen very strongly and uh, hatred and or positive things can also spread very strongly. One study was done by like you know Kramer and colleagues in 2014, they investigated this question by manipulating the emotional content of Facebook users news fed. So, certain groups will receive certain news generally they receive. So, they kind of manipulated some of the content and found that emotional states were influenced by this manipulation collectively in that group with reduced positive or negative content leading to corresponding changes in the emotional balance of the post of the groups. So, kind of that also influenced as a group. So, this study was kind of criticized because it is little controversial in the sense there are ethical issues in manipulating people's emotion on social media, uh, but at least it shows and we all know from our own experiences also. Collectively, a uh, lot of emotions could spread in the social media both positive and negative, a lot of instances are there. So, not necessarily physically one has to be in the group setting, even virtual world also when people are connected kind of virtually with each other emotional contagion can happen. 
there is something called as a primitive emotional contagion. It is an emotional contagion only, but it is primitive in a sense, it is more unconsciously when this happens, it becomes kind of primitive emotional contagion. So, Hatfield and the her colleagues kind of did research on this and highlighted that the concept of primitive emotional contagion, which is particularly relevant in the group emotions. So, it basically means uh, it is uh, refers to the most fundamental and instinctual form of emotional contagion where individuals unconsciously mimic the emotions and expressions of others. So, primitive emotional contagion basically because when emotions get spread from one person to another in a very unconscious way and you just unconsciously mimic without really conscious understanding you pick emotions from others. So, it when it happens very instinctively very unconsciously it is called as primitive emotional contagion. So, it involves the transmission of emotion through facial expression. It is typically most of the emotional spread happens through face. Obviously, other aspects are also involved in it uh, like body language, tone of the voice without conscious effort or cognitive processing. So, it just people pick from the tone how one is speaking, you know, body language, facial expression, people automatically pick that, you know, without really consciously thinking about it and they also pick those emotions. So, that is called primitive emotional contagion, very instinctive and unconscious. So, according to Hatfield and colleagues, emotional contagion can occur spontaneously and automatically without any effort to transmit such or catch such emotions. So, we all know emotions can be very instinctively, we can pick emotions in the group setting. So, that is typically called as primit, uh, kind of primitive emotional contagion. They also propose that individuals automatically and unconsciously mimic the emotional expressions of others leading to a rapid and automatic sharing of emotions within group. So, it can very rapidly spread because it could be very unconscious. When something is very instinctive unconscious it does not take much time, it spreads very fast. So, this process is thought to occur at a more basic level. So, it happens at a much more basic level than cognitive empathy or perspective taking where one can consciously think about something and uh, understand other perspective consciously and then experience emotions which may take time. But primitive emotional contagion can happen very fast and at the much, much more basic level, more instinctic level uh, and uh, that is why it could be much faster also. So, they focused on facial expression as primary medium through which emotional contagion occurs. So, this uh, in primitive emotional contagion mostly spreads through uh, facial expression because face is the most important component of emotions where it is expressed. We have discussed lot of this th expression in the uh, earlier lectures. So, this is this is a kind of automatic mimicry of emotional expression is believed to lead to synchronization of emotional state within grief. Automatically it happens and then synchronized in the group. So, this can create a shared emotional atmosphere or mood among individuals who are in close proximity. Automatically, people just synchronize with each other and share one emotion. Now, emotional contagion can have an evolutionary basis, means it can serve some important functions why it happens. So, evolutionary always when we talk about evolution means what important adaptive function it does. So, that is the evolutionary perspective. It is important and it serves adaptation. So, that is why in that sense evolutionary perspective comes into the picture. So, emotional contagion has an evolutionary significance as it underlies uh, you know perspective taking and empathy wh which are also very important evolutionary. Similar emotional responses can enhance when people similarly experience something collectively can enhance social bonding within the group especially when positive emotions are shared. So, so it's, 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 it does serves important functions of social bonding, which helps a group which, which is very similar to survive and adapt and function, you know. When a group is bonded together and experience similar emotions, their survive, chance of survival becomes higher. So, in that sense, it has an evolutionary functions. It may also lead to collective actions which is crucial for survival of social species like helium. So, when in many time as a species when survival depends on the collective actions, how as a group you are taking actions and protecting yourself. So, emotional contagion does this serve. It helps to bond people together and work collectively towards some purpose which helps them to survive. 
So, that is the evolutionary basis to it. There can be individual differences in the emotional contagion also not everybody will pick emotions similarly. Uh, not everyone is equally prone to emotional contagion. Some people very are very vulnerable and they immediately sucked into the group emotions. Some are more resistant type of individuals. So, it appears that there are maybe individual uh, differences among individuals in their readiness to catch other people emotions. So, individual differences could always be there. It depending on various factors like temp temperament of the person, tendency to approach or withdraw, ability to concentrate and pay attention, the intensity of emotional reactions. All these could influence to what extent somebody will kind of uh, be vulnerable to emotional contagion. Some uh, factors, some additional factors which could also lead to vulnerable to emotional cont contagions like gender. Some researchers women uh, may be more sensitive to emotional cues and expressions making them more susceptible to emotional contagion. So, it is possible that women are more because they are more uh, sensitive to emotional cues. Emotional contagion can happen more in the women as compared to men. Early life experiences can also influence influence of parents, socialization, modeling, etc. can shape how we express and regulate emotions. So, your ability to express and regulate and control your emotions based on your early life experiences can also determine to what extent emotional contagion will be kind of. If you are able to regulate or control, probably there will be less vulnerability, but if you are not able to control and regulate your own emotions, you may be more vulnerable to emotional contagion. Some personality traits uh, could also influence your vulnerability. People with higher empathy, openness to new experience may be more vulnerable. People with higher neuroticism may have higher susceptibility to reacting to, to negative emotions. So, people with higher empathy, ability to identify and understand perspectives of other people who can very easily get into the head of other people and understand how they are feeling. So, with higher empathy probably the emotional contagion could happen much more. People who are very open to new experiences, not very closed, they could also experience more emotional contagion. People with higher neuroticism trait, trait where a lot of emotional neuroticism is where people, uh, people with high neuroticism trait are very nervous, people with nervousness, stability, emotional stability is much less, more worry, more people experience much more worry, worriness and uh, uh, no, less stability emotionally. All this uh, also, so people with neuroticism trait, high neuroticism trait may be more reactive to negative emotions. So, whatever happens, they become much more worry and you know, they get in more sucked into those things. So, those lot of personality trait can also influence. So, there can be individual differences because of so many of these factors. Some even one researcher developed a scale called emotional contagion scale to find out the differences among individuals. So, this scale can be used to a kind of get a score for your own emotional contagion. As a person you can kind of find out what is your level of emotional contagiousness. Moreover, there can be cultural differences in emotional contagion exist due to cultural disparities in conformity and values regarding group norms. So, as a culture also, there may be some culture where emotional contagion could be more, some culture emotional contagion could be less. For example, we discussed in the emotion and cultural setting that there can be individualistic culture, there can be collectivist culture. In collectivist culture, because focus is given more on the groups, norms and setting and uh, more social cohesion is given more importance emotional contagion can happen more in collectivist culture probably as compared to individualistic culture where people are more focused on their own individual life. So, because of these differences in the focus, some culture where emotional contagion could be more expressed or it could be more visible in those culture because of the norms of the group where people give more importance to the social life, groups, norms and so on. So, why this emotional contagion happens? So, what could be the reasons behind it? So, there are different explanations given for how emotions spread in the group. Uh, we will see some of these things. Most of these uh, factors could be uh, kind of uh, explanation can be categorized as uh, unconscious factors or automatic factors and 
some controlled processes. So, there can be automatic factors in the contagion, why contagion happens, some automatic or unconscious factor could be there and there can be some conscious control factors which can lead to emotional contagion. So, we will let us see some of these factors. Some of the automatic processes may include like why emotional contagion happen, one reason is it is a learning, it is an outcome of learning from our childhood. So, emotional contagion can see, be seen as a learned response. So, we learned something from our childhood again and again and then when something happens, we automatically display those things. So, it is a learned thing, some situation happens, then response happens automatically because we have learned it again and again, where we automatically associate certain emotions and behaviors with the emotional expression of others. So, we automatically learned uh, to kind of that certain emotions and behaviors automatically certain uh, emotions and behaviors with the automatic ex ex emotional expression of others. So, whenever people express certain emotions, we automatically know how to respond to that automatically. No? So, if somebody feels ang express anger, we respond automatically to the anger in certain ways because of again and again we have learned to respond it in some way. So, it can be very automatic. So, emotional contagion can also happen because of this learning ex learning that we have learned from our childhood in the context of emotional expression. For example, we learned that fear in others is usually followed by some frightening. When somebody expresses fear, so they will also behave in a frightened way. We may automatically feel fear and take emotion. So, automatically the moment we see somebody also expressing fear, we also automatically take back and you know, express fear in just to respond to those emotions. So, it can be automatically learned response that if other person is expressing some way, we also respond accordingly. So, if we have learned that others anxiety or irritability tends to produce noisy or agitated behavior, we may find ourselves feeling similarly agitated in response. Their own, their uh, irrit irritating or anxiety uh, behaviors could also be responded with some learned response in a similar way. We may learn that happiness in others is associated with kindness and generosity leading us to feel joy when we detect happiness in others because we know when somebody is happy, it may be associated with kindness behavior, generous behavior. So, we also feel happy automatically as a learned response. So, like this lot of this emotional contagion could happen because of automatic learned responses. Next factor which can also lead to emotional contagion is called imitation. Again, it can be also automatic. Emotional contagion can occur through automatic imitation of facial expression, postures and vocal expressions of others, especially those in our group leading to activation of similar emotion in ourselves. So, we imitate very unconsciously whatever other people especially the facial expressions and so on, uh, posture and vocal expressions, you know, especially the group with whom we are very strongly connected, you know. So, that is why we imitate means whatever other person is expressing, we also imitate the same emotions and this is how it is spread. The act of observing person experiencing an emotion activates similar sensory motor states in a very at the nervous level, nerves level, you know, similar motor, uh, you know, sensory motor states could get activated just by observing others experiencing certain emotions. So, it kind of mirrors, you know, which are involved in producing observed emotional response. So, some kind of, uh, some neurons have also been identified, some specialized nerve cells called mirror neurons they seem to have be responsible for lot of these automatic mimicking actions that we do. These are specialized neurons in the brain which enables individuals to automatically mimic the emotional expressions and behaviors of other. So, the moment somebody expresses certain emotions, these mirror neur neurons get activated and it help us to mirror those emotions in us also. So, we will be talking more about these mirror neurons when we talk about empathy later. Uh, but this automatic mimic system, mimicry system is there in our nervous system as well. So, that could also cause emotional contagion. So, when we observe someone else displaying a facial expression of emotion, mirror neurons fires in our brain as if you are experiencing the same emotion yourself. This is how we experience others emotion. This mimicry can be unconscious and immediate contributing to the rapid transmission of emotions. Another factor is called as co-attentions, means when everybody 
is collectively paying attention on something that can stimulate same emotions spreading or experienced by everybody. Emotional contagion can also cause by co-attention which means synchronizing attention with others when everybody is paying attention to one thing collectively it can lead to emotional contagion. When people attend to the same objects or events collectively they are more likely to experience the same emotion because they spend more time about something. So, the same factors, same aspects everybody is focusing. So, emotions will be, is also similar because of the group setting everybody is focusing on the same thing. So, that is causing this co-attention can also lead to experience of the uh, or emotional contagion can happen because of this. One of the study was also done in this for simple to understand this phenomenon of co-attention. Uh, Booth B and Chloe colleagues in 2014, where the participant tasted chocolate either alone or others. So, two conditions were there. Participant uh, they were given to taste chocolate either alone or with others in another condition without speaking to each other. They were just together, but not kind of communicating with each other. Despite this lack of communication, they enjoyed high quality chocolate more than low quality chocolate less when sharing the experience with others compared to eating alone. So, when eating alone there was not much difference in terms of enjoyment of high quality chocolate as compared to low quality chocolate. So, this was much more pronounced when they tasted this chocolate with other people because everybody was paying attention to the same thing and expression of each other's kind of amplified each other's experience. So, the presence of others seem to affect the extent to which they focused on the cause of their pleasure and displeasure. So, if somebody is experiencing pleasure in something and everybody is focusing on that, they will also experience find out the cause of that pleasure collectively in a more amplified way. So, this research suggests that emotional reaction can be amplified by co-attention to the causes of emotions even in the absence of direct interactions or observations of each other. There can be some conscious processes in the contagion as well, emotional contagion. One is communicative imitation, one is un un unconscious imitation that we have already discussed, one can be more conscious imitation or communicative imitation. So, where emotional contagion can also result from intentional acts. For instance, mimicry is not always an automatic response, but may be sometimes an intentional communicative act aimed at demonstrating others that we understand how they feel and share their emotion. So, sometimes we kind of imitate others emotion consciously, knowingly to communicate with others that we understand what you are feeling uh, or we demonstrate that we understand your situations and we sympathize, sympathize with them. So, now it is consciously done, imitation is done, you are feeling sad on the sadness of another person to communicate that you understand how th what they are going through. So, that is called as a communicative imitation and it is can be more conscious and controlled intentional act. So, in a relevant study uh, in, in this context participants who made eye contact with an experimenter. So, that that was a situation where experimenter dropped a TP monitor on his already injured finger. So, that was kind of displayed to them that, that the person has a dis injured finger and the experimenter dropped a TP monitor on the finger itself where it is injured and he displayed lot of pain that then the tended to mimic his pain more when more than those who did not make an eye contact, especially individuals who made eye contact with the experimenter, they experience more pain. So, just to communicate that they understand and what he, what kind of pain he is going through. So, this is kind of a simple uh, experiment that clearly shows that people can consciously also imitate things to communicate that they understand the problems or the pain of other people. So, when they did eye contact, they kind of mimic uh, the pain of the experimenter more than when they did not make eye contact. So, this suggests that mimicry only occurs when the persons expressing the emotion can see it. So, the emotional mimicry can be the result of both intentional, uh, it can be result of intentional emotional communication among individuals. Another conscious process that happens in social emotional contagion is called social comparison. 
we have already discussed about social comparisons and processes involved in it in the earlier lectures also. So, where basically when we compare ourselves with others in various factors, we keep comparing ourselves with others, particularly the people who are relevant to us, our colleagues, our co-workers who are in the same kind of social setting. Uh, sometimes emotional contagion can happen because of the social comparison. How? So, psychologists have found that people tend to compare themselves with others, evaluate their abilities, opinions and emotions in various areas like. Sometimes we do social comparison to understand emotions and express emotions also as apart from many other things like abilities, skills and so on that we also compare, but we also compare emotional, emotional aspects also. When the appropriate emotions are unclear, individuals in a group tend to compare themselves to each other and as a result interpret their emotional responses. Many times when you are not sure what to experience and what to express, especially in those situations we look at others and see how people are doing and compare with them and we kind of pick their emotions because of social comparison. Uh, and uh, this can also lead to kind of consciously uh, kind of emotional contagion can happen because we see others doing it and compare that especially when you are not sure about it. You can kind of also express emotions and pick those emotions from other by consciously comparing yourself with others. For instance, in one study participants who waited for 5 minutes in the presence of another participants waited for 5 minutes the presence of another participant without speaking to them tended to emotionally converge with other participant. So, this is uh, uh, just to show how basically social comparison happened here. So, participant were basically waiting in a it is a condition where they were need to wait for 5 minutes especially in the presence of another participant and they are not speaking to them as such, but they kind of emotionally converge with each other and this emotional convergence occurred primarily when the other participant was reported to be participating in the same experiment. When they knew that the other participant is also part of the same experiment in the waiting period even without kind of speaking to each other, they converge on the same emotional experiences. So, kind of by looking at other person because both were not sure what to do kind of each other they picked emotion from each other by comparing your, themselves because the person understood that the other person is also in the same situation in context. Another factor which can also lead to emotional contagion is empathy. Empathy is basically putting oneself in another person's shoes can lead to emotional contagion. So, you just simply put yourself in other, other situation, try to understand how the person is experiencing. So, putting yourself in their position is empathy. A lot of emotional contagion can happen because of empathy only. So, when observer empathize effectively, uh, they are able to evaluate emotion provoking situation in a similar way the other person is experiencing. So, the better your empathy ability is there, the better will be your ability to understand the other person perspective. So, empathy can involve both conscious and unconscious processes, sometimes unconsciously also one can understand the perspective of other and empathy can involve very conscious process where you analyze the situation of another person consciously and then you understand and, and uh, kind of pick the emotions and express it accordingly and it operates on multiple level of awareness. Different aspects of empathy can occur automatically and without conscious effort while others may require deliberate cognitive processing. So, more complex form of cognitive empathy as I say perspective taking means you understand cognitively consciously think about their perspective. So, there may be more conscious efforts are required. Understanding another person emotions from their point of view also requires conscious cognitive effort. So, empathy could also be another reason for emotional contagion. So, based on our current understanding it is reasonable to assume that both automatic uh, and controlled processes can play for emotional contagion. So, it is very clear that in the emotional contagion sometimes it can happen very unconsciously. It can also happen because of consciously thinking about a situation and picking things consciously from the other members of the group. So, very simple example here is that one can automatically mimic someone's smile very unconsciously 
and also intentionally enhance the facial expression to show that you acknowledge and appreciate the smile. When somebody smiles, you may smile automatically, but also then conscious which is unconscious and more consciously you can add to the impact of that by kind of facially expressing more elaborately to acknowledge and appreciate to express that you know you acknowledge and appreciate their smile. So, both co conscious factors as well as unconscious factors could be collected together in the same example. Sometimes also people deliberately conceal their sm smile if the situation calls for a negative or neutral emotional response. So, in every situation sometimes it some aspects could be unconscious, some aspect could be conscious. So, these are some of the things about uh, group emotions and the major fundamental aspects of group emotion is emotional contagion, why people experience group emotion and uh, the factors reasons or the reasons or the causes behind emotional contagion. Uh, so, these are some of the th important aspects. So, in the next class we will be talking about uh, how we experience emotions on behalf of some groups. So, with this I will stop here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.